have a 1934 Oldsmobile hearse. And this old girl's been sitting for about 75 or 80 years. As you can see, the termites quit holding hands. It was like this when we picked it up though. Uh, all the interior body parts on this thing, the frame structure used to be made out of wood and over it said and outside in the elements for a hundred years nearly. Well, probably 80 years because it was probably kept inside when it was being used, but it kind of fell apart. We will try to put some of this back together later, but we're going to get this old girl running and hopefully driving. I think the rear end is locked up because she did set, you can see the ground level where it sat. So that may pose to be a problem. The transmission stuck in gear, but the clutch does work and release. So at least it has a clutch in it. She has about 28,000 227 miles on her and honestly it's pretty complete even the rollers for the coffin are back here it is missing some of them i believe as you can see it has this rear roller but i think she's missing some other stuff i'm not really sure i've never seen one before until i bought this thing does have the front seat we will set this roof up so it looks halfway decent here after a while but underneath the hood we have a good old inline eight before we get there, we got this neat coil here underneath the dash. It's got fins and stuff on it. I've never seen one like that. Maybe that's just a cover that Oldsmobile put on them, but I thought that was neat. Right here's your little hood thingies that hold your hood down. And they're all nice and chrome. Underneath the hood, we have a good old inline eight. I know Buick made these too, so I think this is not sure if it's a Buick or Oldsmobile engine. I'm sure it's Oldsmobile, but as you can see, we have the start of the Pack Rat Deluxe. And I'm sure this was a Radicus Giganticus because it drug in some pretty good sized stuff. And all of it is pokey because for some reason they like thorn bushes. I don't like them, but I guess they like to build their house out of them. It has a two barrel Strongberg on it, champion plugs. We will have to pull the head because I'm sure these will break off in here like the old International did, but. We'll clean all this up. She's got the horn. She's got the distributor. She seems pretty complete. I think the oil dipstick's on the other side. The headlight's trying to fall off. And the hood in the center here is a little wonky. Right here's the oil dipstick. And as you can see, there's a lot of water in it. Let's do this again here. There, you can see all the water in it, so, uh, there. We're gonna drain all that out of there, fill her with diesel fuel, and let her soak for a while, and pull that head off of there. Big old giant starter. Hopefully it's got enough torque to break her loose, because I know she's stuck, and, well, we're gonna get to work on the old girl, and get her running here in a minute or two, hopefully. Also, she's only got one wheel, but I think we got some around here that'll fit. This shop vac's getting rather weak. I mean, it'll hardly even. Oh, that spark plug looks to be loose. This thing used to be halfway decent when it was brand new. compressor do its thing for a minute and do that all over again but we're making a little bit of headway. we got the engine on the old girl all cleaned up the air hose seemed to work a whole lot better this spark plug here is non-existent it's about rusted off we did buy ourselves a set of them fancy uh milwaukee uh impact sockets so we'll see how they work today we're gonna try not to break these bolts off Well, that one came out. Oh, I forget. 
you see this little hood piece here, it's gonna make our job real fun today. Let's see there. Not too bad. With this carburetor being open like this, you never know what they're gonna look like inside. We will have to pull the distributor here in a minute, but. Well then, they're coming apart pretty good. There's quite a bit of rust on the end of it, but nothing too bad. Might be an easy one. I'll put you guys on the time lapse and we'll get the rest of them apart. You can see the stuff on the bottom of these if the camera does its thing right there. None of them are breaking yet, so hopefully she'll be easy. Dual points. I wouldn't have thought about that. And man, they don't look bad. And there looks too bad. That's the original set of points. We will have to clean them up a little bit, but to be honest, they look almost brand new for as long as this old girl's been setting. We are gonna have to undo these bolts here in a minute. And this distributor shaft, since it's cast aluminum, is probably seized to the block here and hopefully we don't have to pull on it too hard because sometimes these break because metals that are not the same like aluminum or pop metal and steel they stick together really really well sometimes all the head bolts are out except for like six of them wait yeah five of them so we're gonna go ahead and heat that up undo them bolts and hope for the best that one in that's too easy right there is there a vacuum line on this and I'm wondering because if there is we'll have to deal with that there is not moment of truth here would you look at that we got lucky today a little bit of rust around it but nothing major Man, that looks good down in there. I mean, there's not no rust or nothing on it. If we don't do this, we'll lose them in like two seconds. So, better put them back on there. Something I didn't realize, some of these had washers underneath. Since they're head bolted and not head studded, they're normally a lot easier to get the head off of. You do have to cut right about it. there and right about well there you go there's quite a bit of rust down in there quite a bit of it we retrieved a hammer so give her a she seems to be loose She only weighs probably a hundred and some odd pounds. She might not weigh that much, but these old heads are rather heavy. Oh boy. Head gasket don't look too bad. Move on. Vacuum line of sorts over there. What? Something's, something's up. go Whew. Whew. now we got her hand stuck Whew. head gasket's a little 
wonky there, nothing bad though. Got her whooped. All in all, I gotta say she don't look too bad for sudden for you know 75, 80 years. You can see these are clean as can be. That one there's got quite a bit of surface rust in it. This one a little bit towards the top, but nothing too bad. She does seem to be really locked up, but uh we probably could have broke her loose by bumping it with the starter a bunch of times. But all these valves are gonna be stuck, and it's easier just to clean it out of here and clean everything up before you run that through there because this carbon that falls down will score the cylinder walls and so will that rust we're gonna take this head gasket off here shop vac this out fill it with some uh acetone and transmission fluid and well we do need to drain that oil too and we'll let her set overnight and tomorrow she should break free and hopefully we'll have the old girl got a good 60 40 mix in this jug and well we're just gonna pour it in there like we did the other ones and Well, we'll let that soak overnight, but first we're gonna, before we let her set, we're gonna go ahead and pull the old drain plug, put some diesel in there. And for everyone that's gonna say, you got it all over the ground, it's catching in the catch can down there and also in our little drain bucket thing. So we ain't gotta worry about it hitting the ground. Upgraded to a high tech oil catching system. We cut the bottom off of like a 50 gallon trash can. So hopefully this works out in our favor. And that's what I thought, that's water. That's a lot of water. That's a lot, a lot of water. No oil even. Let's just dump that out. Oh my gosh. Good Lord. Wow. <laughs> Won't hurt anything being on the ground. It's water. A lot of water. And it's just straight water, I think. Any oil? At all? That's a good minute of water just pouring out of this thing. Not even a lick of oil yet. Nope. Nope, oh, we better get that underneath there. That's never a good sign. Uh, at least it's clean water, not rusty. But there's probably three gallons in there, another three gallons on the ground, so. And it's still just mainly water. Man alive. Water again. Guess we didn't need no oil catch can. There ain't no oil in this thing. Well, we're gonna let that drain for the next probably uh, 12 to 18 business days on this one and go get some diesel fuel and hope for the best here. Hey, at least we had drained it today because uh, I think tomorrow it's gonna be below freezing and it would have just been a ice block in That's there. That's how much water was in this thing. Get you guys close. There's maybe a teaspoon or a tablespoon or maybe half a cup of oil that was in this thing. We dumped out about three gallons on the ground of water. There's about three gallons of water in here. So that's never a good sign. We're going to soak it with some diesel fuel, but at least the there's no rust in the uh, water. So that is a halfway good sign. It's about half a gallon of, well, maybe two gallons or so of diesel down in there. We'll give it a little bit of... acetone and transmission fluid while we're at it. The only bad thing about uh, putting all this diesel in the oil pan is, is if there's even a small leak in any of the gaskets, like the oil pan and stuff, it's gonna find it because it basically degreases everything. I'm 
want to say she's full. Yep, full all the way over. So it took about, I'd say 10 gallons to fill her up. So there, there was probably 10 gallons of water in this thing. Because I've never seen that much water in one of these with that little oil. Normally the oil's on top of the water, but in this case, there was maybe a cup of oil left in it. Everyone always seems to ask if these horns on these things work. 96% of the time they don't, but we'll give this one a try. Oh, maybe it will. It does work, but it's pretty surprised. Oh, it's got some dirt daubers in it too, but 90% of the time they don't work. This is the exception. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why some of them work and some of them don't. I think they get water in them, and maybe this one didn't since it was off to the side instead of towards the center. But she does work. I think we should be able to pry right about here and get it to engage. Now the only problem is, is holding it in and making it turn. Moment of truth here. Ooh. Sound right down in there. It's all the way in. Found out why the starter wouldn't work. It's not the starter's problem. It is the uh, flywheel's problem. As you can see, the starter gear ring on the flywheel is loose. It's supposed to be up in there around here somewhere. And well, it's just flopping around in there. That is probably why she was parked. That probably broke off there, and at the time, they probably just got another hearse, and it wasn't worth fixing this, and it could have locked the motor up years ago, or they might have thought it was rod knocking and shut her off and never tried starting her again. But it looks like we have to dig all of this stuff out of here and take off that panel there, pull the transmission, pull the flywheel off of this thing the clutch all that stuff and take it apart heat that ring up and try to shrink it back on there and hopefully we can fix it that way if not i think if we take that off of there where it ain't just beating around in there and straighten this bumper back down or unbolt it we can use a hand crank and hand crank the thing to start it but no matter what we're gonna get a run look right here's our problem that cracked about ah 80 years ago and well, they never put her back on the road, so we're going to have to pull the clutch and everything off of here. At the moment, the motor is still locked up, but uh, we're going to try to take a crowbar and get on these bolts and uh, pry it over, break her loose, and undo the clutch. Then we'll undo the uh, flywheel off this thing, weld that back on there, and we should be good to go because the inside of this thing looks good. If that wouldn't have been broke, we would have already had her running. a lot of beating on the old engine with our wood block here it finally it moves we got all six bolts out of the clutch but we have to undo one more bolt here that holds the clutch spoon fork whatever you want to call it in there i forgot that these are the drum style flywheels so they the clutch sets in them about an inch three quarters of an inch around there so gotta undo that then the clutch should fall out of there and Hopefully we'll be good to go after that and we'll get that bad boy welded back together because, well, she's cracked in half. Clutching everything out of there. We got the flywheel off and the ring gear. You can see where it's cracked right there. It's been cracked for a really long time because it's all rusted. We're going to clean this up, bring them inside, weld that on there. We're going to tack weld it and hopefully we get it on there, you know, halfway straight so it doesn't work the starter to death or mess anything up. But it shouldn't be too hard. But getting that back in there may take an act of Congress because... Getting it out took like three hours. What that ring gear thing is made out of, which is I think is cast iron, does not weld very good. We welded it, then we heated it and set it down on there. And about two seconds later, it cracked in half again. So we put it on there and went around it and just welded the crap out of it, about 7,000 tack welds. So I'm gonna throw it back on there. That may throw her out of balance a little bit. I'm not sure if these are balanced on the flywheel or if a little tack weld matters, but. Shouldn't be too long, and she should this be running. Moment of truth, we get to see if the uh, 
repair we did on that flywheel works. We got our starter ready to go here. We got our universal key, so we should be able to push this little deal in here. And we should be able to give her a whirl. Cross your fingers. When we welded it on there, we welded it together and then heated it and put it back on there. And when it cooled, it cracked back in half in the same spot. So when I put it on there, I welded it on there and there's a gap in the gears. that's about a quarter of an inch where there's no gear. So that starter gear is popping when it hits in there. Compression. There we go. It just took us a few times going around with it. So now, number one's the top dead center on the compression stroke. And somehow we got a little piece of rust there that we don't want down in the motor. Not exactly sure how that fell there, but now the head gasket gets to go back on. Well, the head, I mean. Head gasket's already on there. I'm going to about put the cart before the horse here because I started putting the head on there and realized we got to get cylinder number one to top dead center before we do that. So when we put the distributor in there, we know where to put the fire in order. So we got to take that back off of here and we'll do this again in a second. Oh man. <sighs> I was done ready to uh, put her back together, but uh, the motor wasn't ready for that. the distributor drive shaft thing in there. Uh, last thing to do is throw this little distributor on without dropping a nut or something down a spark plug hole. Because that could very well happen easily. Man. The problem is now, I don't know if it's a problem yet or not. Not exactly sure where it's supposed to be lined up for. Uh... You'd think number one would be right about there. Well, honestly, it is about right there. It just needs a little bit of a turn. That'll mess us up, them being there. I think right about here. Hitting. Sand these points down fairly good, then hook that uh, coil up. We got the plugs and everything in here, so. And the distributor is still loose. We got to tighten her down, but looks like that side's good. We'll get this side and get back. So it's the guys. next day, and we have enough starting fluid to probably start the Titanic here, and we have some charged batteries. So maybe she's gonna have some compression today and actually fire off for us. Hook the coil up here and uh, we're just good. Oh yeah, we gotta have to I forget there's three or four steps to work at the start here. It don't seem like it's got much more than what it did yesterday. It tried. It just won't take off. So, 
what we're gonna do is pull that intake off over there and make sure there's nothing in there. There shouldn't be, we are. We checked before we put the heads on, there was nothing in the valve area. It's hidden just on one or two and it's trying, but we're just not getting it to roll fast enough. So we're gonna check that out and see what's going on. mess with this car it's uh pouring down the rain today but we had hand cranking it since the flywheel and the starter kind of gave up on us we cannot keep this thing running i'm gonna say the rings are just absolutely gone and it may have been parked because the motor was somewhat wore out and when the flywheel broke they could have been cranking on it trying to get it running when the flywheel gave up on it because we've done everything we've pulled the head off again we've retimed the distributor a million times we put a fresh rebuilt strongbird carb out of the box on there that's for another build and it didn't work off that either we've adjusted the timing and everything a million times but we did kind of get it running so i guess we'll go with that it kind of ran we may revisit with a new flywheel and a new starter and some other stuff but it's probably going to need a rebuild but we were going to get it running and driving but since the motor's so weak and doesn't want to stay running we ain't gonna be able to do that but thank you guys for watching and Maybe consider leaving a like and subscribing because we got a lot more cool videos coming to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video.